I love this game. This is the maintenance day and we've got the rear hub DRE 6010. You've already seen the bearing maintenance and today we're gonna do the free hub. I'm gonna show you how it sounds after 2500 of kilometers, so roughly 1500 miles or so. It is okay, it is even. You can hear those clicks so there, there is a nice rhythm to it, which means this should be okay. But after that much of kilometers ridden, it's a good idea to look inside. Let's do it. Find some nice place for your job, uh, where you won't lose any of the bearing balls. This is the model. That's the M6010 Shimano Diori uh, rear freehab. The difference between the hub I have and the manuals Shimano uh, provide on the internet is that they say you're gonna use 10 millimeters um, Allen key, whereas I needed 15 millimeters. That's the biggest problem. But here we are using 17 millimeters wrenches in order to remove the axle. Uh, the whole process of doing this uh, is in my other tutorial about uh, bearing maintenance on this. A hub. I highly recommend if you want to uh, maintain the free hub or if you need to do this, do it, do it uh, just uh, at the same time with the, with the bearing. So you do the whole process just once. Now it's time to remove uh, the axle and then we will have access to our free hub body. Have some nice tea because it will take about maybe 45 minutes for you to do it. You can remove uh, the ball, uh, the balls, uh, especially if you're gonna um, service the the hubs. It's also a good idea to remove the seals then uh, because uh, you're not gonna damage anything. And the seal on the free hub body si side, you're gonna need to remove that anyway. Count the balls, count all the balls because it's not always the same number on both sides and also there will be lots of balls in the inside the free hub body. So counting those is a good idea. 15 millimeters Allen key is not easy to find. Uh, you need to buy it before doing this job. This is how you're gonna use it. So it's not 10 millimeters, it's 15. On most stores you're gonna buy, you're gonna be able to buy two till 14 and not 15 millimeters. Now this is the trick. Lean the wheel against the, uh, the um, wall because you're gonna need to apply a lot of force. This is an old seat post which is giving me much more leverage. I would not be able to unthread this free hub with my little Allen key only. As you can see I'm using a lot of force trying and trying and trying and finally uh, it will it will go. Now I can I can feel uh, that it's it's uh, easier and easier. Now then it will go just by hand. So use the wall. Highly recommend that, and some longer leverage. You uh, unthread the free hub body counterclockwise. So to the left. This is how it looks like. The the job is fairly easy except for one other step. Here you can see some grime. I can see some grime. It looked like grease, but it's a grime. So we're gonna clean this one. Uh, we want to have, this is the grime. We want to have our free hub, um, our hub body beautifully shiny, clean. It looks so nice then, and it will spin nicely. It will click nicely as well. Now it's clean and I'm putting some oil there. Not too much, just just the whole surface of um, of um, connection between the the hub and the free hub body uh, I want to have um, with the oil. There is one little spacer. Now I'm cleaning everything from the outer side before I open it. Now the seal. Be very gentle, very careful, careful here. Do it little by little. Since I've done it already, now it goes much easier. But for the first time, it might be very easy to uh, bend that seal. These two grooves. This is very bad nuts because you need some special tool. Shimano. I don't know. I'm not sure whether they still produce those. And here you want to unthread this one clockwise, guys. Clockwise. 
um, if if you need to really you can use a hammer and a screwdriver hitting this groove here but it's only if you would either throw it away or recycle this free hump uh, or just do it by yourself so if, if it's old and in really bad shape you can try to do it like that it's possible but my tool simply fit it here so I use just just by coincidence this tool some uh, nice original tool is made by uh, I mean the RJ the the bike guy is showing how to do it I'm linking his video it's very helpful if you want to have that tool maybe for for the sake of having service workshop uh, and doing it for for others otherwise I, I've done it with my mine now uh, the balls do not open both sides of the free hub body uh, because you want to remove the balls from the outer side first count those and then do the same job for the for the other side I am not hundred percent sure I <laughs> I did it correct on this outer side I, I think I had 34 on the inner side 38 guys if you've done this please confirm that uh, I'm right here in the comment uh, so if you are very gentle you can see there's one ball there like deeper into that part I was not sure on which side it should be but I think it was it was correct so inner side 38 outer side 34 but um, do it little by little and count these so this is the 37 and then I had the 38th also uh, that's what I think but please please check it out so don't open everything at once first the outer side and then the inner side now the seal be very gentle here there's not much space for for the screwdriver there to remove this one it's also a rubber seal on the steel part and these are the poles first I'm removing uh, these little shims it's good to use a screwdriver here because it's not that easy to remove it just by hand you don't need a lot of force but but screwdriver is is helpful just pop it boom and then and then it's cool so uh, two parts here like two shims together and then one the black one make sure you, you assemble it in the right order back then then clean it you don't want to have any old grime uh, old grime old grease this these are the poles four of these don't freak out that you have only four and it's asymmetrical on your free hub this is how it's supposed to be now those little clips or springs just be gentle with these uh, these are very very uh, like light and 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 thin so you don't want to change the shape of, of those because these are the ones that make the poles actually work open up and click this is the groove you're not putting any pole into uh, it's not as deep as the other ones and it has different shaping uh, you you want to have your springs to end there so now the other one for the other two poles uh, I'm removing I'm just re I just removed the poles first gently and then uh, proceeded with uh, the spring removal don't don't try to do it super super fast you don't have to do it fast uh, use some solvent just a little bit of it uh, because that's environmental friendly uh, and you don't really need to use a lot just as you can see what was that 20 milli milli milliliters or so and then some some brush some uh, it, it it won't take you much time and it won't be very very problematic you don't want to have any old uh, grease and grime because especially during the winter in a in the freezing temperatures it might uh, cause the poles to to get stuck and that's when they don't hold then they don't engage nicely this is the part I'm using simple Shimano hub grease all the links are in this description uh, I'm putting quite a lot I mean I want to have the grease on the whole surface but with no excess of the grease I will also add a little bit of oil there because uh, it looked like there was a lot of oil and grease also uh, because the poles need to work nicely so two on the left side two on the right side or, or outer and inner side 
these are the poles, this is how they look like. And now you want to make it like this, one on the inner side, and then you leave one groove and you put another one for the inner spring and then two poles for the outer spring. So they're like uh, every other uh, pole is, is for either the, the outer spring or the inner spring. This is how it looks like. And now just gently we're gonna uh, put those springs uh, back. You don't want to uh, have the gap of the spring or the end of the spring on some of the poles because that would uh, cause, that could cause the failure. Gosh, now I'm, I'm not sure whether they should, it should end with the groove, with that groove or not. I think so. I think so. That also some, that is also something to, to check out. Uh, definitely not on the poles. Okay, this is the outer part of the free hub and I'm gonna show you how the poles actually work. This is how you put it back. We're gonna do that in a second, but engaging. This is the the whole system. This is the whole mechanic. You can see the, those poles engaging in, in those uh, little steps on the outer part. Uh, looking good. So four poles and now a little bit more grease on the outer part right there. Not too much, not too much excess of it. And then once more the whole surface of the poles and whole me mechanism. After that I'm going to put the seal back in its place, uh, first greasing it. Uh, these are, these are the, the shims first, so the black one and then those silver ones which are which hold together that's it it's cool and now the little seal for the outer part i'm greasing it and make sure you push it nicely all the way it goes like for one or two millimeters into uh, that part but you want to have even uh, edge so make sure it's it's evenly pushed uh, into it. Now I'm, I've put some grease there so that uh, those those balls will hold nicely when we um, reassemble uh, the whole free hub. This is it, 38. So on my on my free hub I'm having 38. Maybe other system would be other uh, other option would be also good but I'm doing it like that like this. The balls first now I push all those four poles inside so that they will not take any balls with them. And I just connect those two parts. Maybe pushing it like halfway through and then uh, putting all the balls into place would be good. But as you can see, you can see the poles. There is no balls uh, that would fall into that mechanism. It clicks nicely, it works nicely, so it was okay. And that would be the way for me to, to, to go. Now the outer side with 34 balls on my <laughs> free hub, guys. Uh, so put those nicely. Then I'm gonna use some oil. It will be like four or five drops of the oil. You can see some pretty big gaps between the, the balls. The gap is normal, but I'm not sure whether it should be uh, that much, that many. So this is something for you to to check and and let me know in the in the description, in the comments. Now those uh, four or five drops of the oil. I want those to go inside the whole uh, mechanism with the pulse, uh, making sure that uh, the grease won't be that that dense. Just it is just why I did it. Now counterclockwise, we are threading in. Uh, that uh, nut, which is uh, at the same time, which is um, the, the bearing race. That's why I, I've put some grease on it. And it has the race on both sides for the free hub and for the axle. Now I'm using my tool. It's on its place, clicking beautifully. Very, very good. Always check it before you put the the axle, the disc brake rotor and the wheel back on the bike, just check it. It should be spinning nicely, no friction, very evenly, that's it. And that's the, the spacer there. Now I'm putting the grease for the balls. 
and these will be the the um, bigger balls for the bearing the bearing which connects the axle to the to the hub so these are the ones that take our weight okay put all those there the grease will help you keeping uh, the balls in place that's it and then we'll be ready to put the seal and and just put it back on onto the hub nice the seal make sure you put it all the way down uh, it should stop nicely but in order not to bend it do it little by little I, I just use the pliers here uh, pushing those evenly from both sides simultaneously so that no bend will will happen there and now uh, clockwise I'm threading the free hub body so when you pedal you actually make it uh, make it really really tight I just help myself a little bit with a Mm, uh, with this Allen key wasn't necessary actually but you can do this and then some more grease uh, on the other side of the of on the other bearing here uh, but as I said it's good to service to maintain the bearings and the free hub at the same time so we are actually done now uh, what we need to do is to reassemble the cup and cone uh, and then the delete the play on the bearings make sure they they work nicely and this is how it's been done here make sure once again it's everything free nice uh, those engage nicely this is the sound working great see you guys <laughs>